Alright guys, here I'm going to show you how to use the built-in IKFK switch in Maya, which works really good. I actually like it, and uh, and a lot of times I'll use this complicated forum, which I showed you guys, and I'll go over it in just a second. And I won't even have a controller built in over here. I'll literally have it, so maybe I'll have a set driven key, and I'll always choose set driven key, but you could have a controller over here for rotations only, which would be nice. But um, what I'm building here, what I have set up, is this thing called IKFK switch in Maya. It's built in so that it tracks two different motions. And we talked about the conditions where that changes. If you're animating a person talking, you're going to use FK. If you're animating a person pushing on an object, you're going to use IK to get things to be a little bit more believable. The reason why I like the built-in system is that Maya allows you, without having to set up a complicated system, and there's ways to set it up quick, and which I'll show you next week, won't incorporate them both this week or your brain will explode. But having it built in just saves a little bit of time. You li literally just have to turn it on and use your set IKFK to actually determine how it's going to uh, interpret things. You'll notice the IK pulls away. This is kind of nature of the beast even when we do it through a mail script which I'll give you next week. That'll be the manual way. But built in Maya you can have it so it all runs together but you'll still see this IK falling away from it just kind of a nature of the beast because what's happening is it's tracking the previous motion it's following that previous motion around All right, and um, they also give you the option in Maya to create a controller for this IK unfortunately it doesn't always work it worked in earlier versions of Maya in 2012 it seems to not work so great so what I've been doing, especially for the animation pipeline we're working on right now, I'm going to have it so the animator will be animating just the IK itself. Is that a bad thing? Not really, if it saves time with this whole built-in IKFK switch. But that may not necessarily be your choice. I'm going to introduce both of them to you. Again, this week will be the built-in one, and next week will be the mail script to set up the external one. So let's go over that right now. So let me go ahead and delete this guy. Actually, you know what? I'll just make a new one. We're uh, just making a new one side by side. We'll use our grid system to keep it somewhat straight. So I'll go in here and uh, build my shoulder, build my elbow, and build my wrist, and then finally my wrist twist right there. Or, uh, you know, when he's waving at people. And uh, we can change those orientations later. But for now, we'll just get this initially set up. It's a little bit bent. That's fine for now. All right, so we'll go and click on the elbow. Oops, my bad. Make sure we're right on it. Doop. Might as well. No, you hold up. Let me hit enter. There we go. Missing one step. And we'll click on the elbow. Click away. And we'll go right here. Hit enter. And again, we're making a thing that looks like a trident. I love this uh, forearm and the reason why it's because it's pretty organic and we don't have to move the effector. The end effector when moving it using this built-in IKFK switch will break so just be aware of that. Using the built-in IKFK switch it can break. Um, but using it when it's very linear straightforward here's the arm and it goes it actually works pretty decently. I don't always recommend making bones in the perspective mode, but since this is pretty linear, it does a halfway decent job. All right, so we got this all set up. Let's go and get our IK handle tool set up and ready to go. Pop this guy up. Make sure it's RP, because we're going to go from the elbow to the first bone on the wrist. There we go. Sweet jibs. Let me go and close that. Jibby jibs. So let's go to uh, our IK handle tool again. Let's do SE solver. Close it a little bit too early. And this time we're going to click on the radius and we'll click on the ulna. And again, we're building this whole system to get more of that realistic feel. What you'll have to do when you paint your weights is make sure that this guy, this whole rotation, kind of controls the forward part of the forearm and the back part of the forearm is left solid and unmoving. It might be a little bit tricky to paint but it is completely capable and plausible. 
I've had students do it with a my six armed creature that I give them, and they've actually rocked it. Did a pretty good job. So now with these IKs, I'm going to grab this initial wrist bone. I'm going to grab this IK, and this IK here, and then what we're going to do is make them go underneath this initial wrist bone here. We're going to go P, hit P, and there you see we have a wrist twist, literally moving like an actual radius and ulna system. So we got this all set up. So that it's it's really that easy. Um, you can, if you want to, add an extended kind of like a um, aim constraint if you want to prevent any um, extra movement happening here. But you don't have to per se. It's pretty much up to you how you want that set up. And you can look at my uh, word tutorial if you're confused about it. I can sit with you and work it out. All right, so we got this all set up. So let's talk about how to set up the IKFK switch. Let's grab our main IK. This is our hinge IK or for the elbow. You can just call it like the tendon or whatever for the arm. And uh, the first key, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure, let me show you how to turn this on first. I'll turn it off so you can watch me do it again. What we want to do is I like having this on. It's called animation details. This tells me when I'm in IK or FK mode. So you go into your heads up display, animation details right there. And it says right now that we're compare, we're purely in IK mode. So what we're going to do, we're on every frame right now. What we're going to do is try to get this IK to mimic the one we did previously. So we can see it matching its movement. So what we'll do is grab our IK, go to our first key, go to animate, IKFK keys, and we're going to set IKFK key here. What, I'll, what I'm doing initially is setting my range. How much animation is in this piece? And this is mainly for blending, because what you could do if you wanted to, you could just keep animating like a crazy person, keep going on IK, 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 and you could have it so it goes to FK. What you'll do is have to give yourself a few frames for that to happen. But we're going to go straight in. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hide this guy so he isn't so distracting. So we're going to go over our first frame, grab our IK, and set my IK FK key. Whoosh. So it makes our first one. I'm going to go scroll up to like 60. I'm going to move him. And you'll notice it's tracked. See, it's now remembers where my FK left off. It's pretty cool because it allows you to go back in here. And if you want to do FK, you can put an FK in there. So we can see now maybe he's pushing on a box. He's pushing it away from himself. Be hard, get away from me, box. All right, so we go in here and we hit S. You can set the key like that, or you can go in here and do set IKFK key. And this is better to do it this way. I mean, you can hit S, it'll track it just the same, but setting IKFK, this sets it up so that it blends. So you see, we did it initially here, and it moves over here. Control Z and go back and do it one more time. So we'll grab our IK. There's our first keyframe. Drag it all the way to 60. Move it. Say IK, FK. There we go. See that guy? It's tracking it. All good. It's now what this does with this full range, I can go in here and say I'm going to have him talk to somebody. All of a sudden he's not pushing on anything. We just set our initial IK keys and then in here I can have this guy like having a conversation. So when you talk to somebody, you do not push, you do, your arms do not move like they're on a marionette, which they do when you grab something because there's weight behind that object or just a destination your arm's going to. But if I'm talking to my buddy Tom, I'm just going to do a regular rotation. So what I can go in here is turn off my enabler. Again, this is the switch that turns off and on IK and FK. Turn it off. See that it's off. And I can now rotate. Talking to somebody. Hey, buddy. And then I go in here. Set my IK, FK key. So what it does now, it blends them. That set IK, FK key allows things to be blended. 
They do give you other options here. You'll notice they have a connect IK to FK and move IK to FK. Connect um, IK to FK, that's if you have an ex erroneous extra controller out here. It doesn't always work like it should. The controller starts floating away. So I just you know mainly use the IK system. And move IK to FK. So if you need them to go together, be in the same spot, maybe they're just too far away and you need them to, to snap together so you get a little better blending, you can use my move IK to FK right there. So now, if you want to see the blending in action, we grab this guy and we can see it blend together. Pretty cool. Nice. Built-in IKFK switch with Maya. This has actually been around since Maya 6. Nobody ever uses it. I like it. I think it's great. It's beautiful. You just have to set your range for the IK ahead of time. And then you can just go in there and do an FK. Set IKFK key. And it will blend it for you. All blended together. Pretty cool. So next week we'll talk about the manual system. The one where you can either set it up raw or you can use a mail script. I'll give you guys an associated mail script to show you how to organize it. But uh, for now, this is the built-in one. So let's end this one for now, and we'll talk about some other systems. We'll look at telescoping joint today, as well as setting up the initial head.